this is a workaround for a desired uh, custom price table. It's, it's going to be an interesting thing, trust me. So I'm going to go here into Edit Item, and then I'm going to go into Custom Fields, and then I'm going to create okay, um, what I call a, a custom internal price table that I'm going to use to help my users determine what price they should, uh, you know, they should buy something for worst case scenario and what price they should sell a worst case scenario. So let's, I'm going to put here one called target max cost, and then I'll create this one, uh, target min price. You're going to see, uh, I think some of you probably already know where I'm going with this. Okay. So I'm creating one called target max cost and target min price. And then what I'll do with these custom fields is that I can actually now in my item table, I can say, look, the maximum I ever want to pay for this, let's say, for example, I'm, I'm price shopping, and the, the maximum I ever want to pay for this, let's say, is uh, 55 cents, and the maximum I ever want to sell it for, just to say a number, is uh, 59 cents, okay? And sometimes we can even, um, interesting situation, we can go by season. So let's say we can do uh, target mass cost, and we can call this winter or something like that, right? Okay, because obviously we're dealing with avocado, so there could be a price change based on uh, season, I'm just guessing. And then I can just do uh, the same thing, target min price, and let's say that that will never, that's that, that's not, that doesn't vary through the seasons. So we can also use interesting things like that and have multiple target max cost and target uh, max cost, let's say this is 50, 57 cents and then the target minimum price will always be 59 cents no matter what. So what I like about uh, doing this with uh, custom fields is that in this um, item price list that I have here, I can enable this, right? So I can enable all these uh, target minimum, target maximum, and you know, I can, in this case, let me maximize these. So I can max, you know, put them here on the left just to kind of uh, make it easier, right? And then I can just make these smaller. These are my, my all my target max costs and my target max prices. And again, I can do the exact same thing where I can take now a whole slew of information like our average sales price, our average cost, our target minimums and our target maximums to make you know better decisions and analyzing about the pricing of our products. Now, the other um, uh, neat part is also, if I'm doing an estimate, let me just kind of show you, I'm gonna go into customers and I'm gonna go into create estimates. If I'm going into estimates, I'm going to modify this estimate template um, to show uh, these custom fields. So I'm going to click on that one, that one, and that one, okay? So the first three, but I'm not clicking on the print side because I really don't want the customer to see this. This is just for internal purposes. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit okay. So whenever I'm, I'm putting together an estimate in this particular case, let me just make the screen uh, bigger. Um, I select my item, let's say it has avocado. And before I am making a decision about how much I'm going to sell this for, I have tons of interesting information here, like, you know, what is my max cost that I should be buying? What is the max cost that I should be buying in the winter? And what's the minimum price that I should be selling it for? So in this particular template, we're dealing with cost and markup percentage, okay? We can actually uh, disable that if we want. So let me show you. We can go to customize, go to columns, and I can turn off, in this case, markup. And if I turn off markup in the estimate that I'm dealing with just with the sales price. So now I know that based on my item list, my sales price, I should sell it for 65. But if it comes to negotiation, I know that my target minimum sales price should be 59 cents. So these are just kind of interesting things that I learned along the way. Uh, some of my clients have helped me, have asked me to consult with them in terms of having uh, much better information about, about pricing, okay? Now, the other part here is, um, which is what would be technically the proper usage of, um, of this target minimum and target cost, which is using price level. So this is one workaround that I'm suggesting that you can use and you can start thinking about what interesting things you can do with this. But the, the true way to do this is price levels. And this is the part that yeah, I want you to pay the most attention to if you're not familiar with price levels, because this is really the fun part about the presentation. So I'm gonna go ahead and, and hit clear here, and then I'm gonna go to customize data layout and get rid of these target minimum and target maximum. And by the way, I, this could still have 
value uh, for other purposes, maybe for reporting purposes. But the, the true way that we should control these uh, minimums and maximums and target pricings and things like that should be based on price level. So I'm going to click on the list menu and then I'm going to click on price level list. Okay. In my price level list, I'm going to create a couple of price levels. Just, I know there's some there. I, I should just make this inactive. Um, that way we're not uh, looking at those. But um, So I'm going to create a couple of price levels here. I'm going to go to new, and then I'm going to create, first I'm going to create what I call a fixed percentage uh, price level. This is just going to be a percentage uh, off of sales price. Okay, So let's say this is just called 15% from item list price. Okay, and we'll put here 15%, and then we'll decide, you know, how we want to round. Let's say we want to round to the nearest cent, and then we'll click OK. Okay, so that's one price level. Another interesting price level, it's actually upping the price. Okay, um, we can actually increase the price, let's say, by um, 25%, and we can call this uh, premium delivery or something like that. So let's say, for example, somebody wants this rushed, but we're not going to charge them delivery but we want to build in the delivery somehow in the sales price so that's kind of an interesting way of doing it so i'm going to hit okay so what happens with these two price levels is when i go create a new estimate again i'll pick here a uh, has avocado i will now have a drop down here under the cost that actually gives me the, the two suggested uh, uh, prices based on the the price level so i have my base sales price so that's part of the item list and then I have my 15% um, my, uh, uh, discount. Uh, this is based on the sales price. And then I have my premium delivery, whatever I call it, which will increase the price. So these are kind of the interesting things about price levels. Now, one of the major criticisms that QuickBooks has is that I can't edit my item list from here. So most people, to edit the item from here, they have to do a two-step process. I go to the list, item list. Then they go look for the item list, and obviously this is a lot more a lot more difficult when you have a big item list like this. But they go look for the item list, right click and edit. I'm going to show you a shortcut uh, to edit uh, an item on the fly from an estimate, invoice, purchase order, sales order, and sales receipt. So what I do is I'll click on the item. Okay, I'll just have it selected. Just make sure the cursor is there. I don't have to select it. And then I hit Control L in my keyboard. Control L in my keyboard. And then I, I leave the control button press and then I press E. So it's control L E. Let's go back to that for a second. So control L E will quickly take me straight into editing an item from uh, an estimate, from, <clears throat> from an invoice, from something like that. So that's kind of, that becomes interesting because if I want to change what my cost should be, so let's say I'm going to change it to 45 and what my base sales price should be, let's say it's 69 and then I hit OK. Uh, then after doing that, what I can do is I can clear this and I can put it again. So now, now my cost is based on 69, but when I hit the drop down, my premium delivery and my 15% uh, price level gets recalculated. So I, I think that's a really useful piece to be able to on the fly edit the price. That way the item table, uh, sorry, the price level can activate right there and then. Okay, let's do a different uh, exercise with price levels. I'm going to go ahead and click on uh, list, back to price level list, okay? And um, I'm going to go to price level and new. And then uh, I'm going to change this into a per item type. And then I'm going to call this lowest. Oh, let's do the same terminology, min, min sales price. Okay, so what this does is allows me to, to go through my entire uh, item list and I can choose item by item what is that minimum sales price that I want to sell this for. So let's say, for example, my target minimum sales price for the Haas Avocado is 59 cents and then I'll hit OK and then I'll go ahead and create another price level, new, and then I'm going to call it uh, minimum, uh, let's call this maximum sales price let's say for whatever reason we want to make sure that we don't sell something over a certain dollar amount because maybe our customers will get mad at us or something like that so if, let's say for marketing purposes or maybe sometimes i am prohibited by the vendor of the product from selling something above a certain dollar amount that's that that stuff happens uh sometimes so i can just put there 89 and then i hit okay and then i'll have hit okay then i'll have 
I have two price levels now just to go back to it to make sure my new price level is it's in there in place uh, there's that that, that should be 89.89 okay and I'll hit okay and then this one should be I'm just double checking and this one is 0.59 which is my minimum okay so I'm gonna close that go back into my estimate select my item and now I have as part of my drop down price levels, I have my whatever my 15% of sales price, I have my premium delivery, and then I also have what my minimum and my maximum sales price should be. So this is a this is the proper way to do um, the thing, the exercise that I did earlier with all the different uh, custom fields. But I just kind of wanted to you know make sure that this was uh, an alternative, and you can use it uh, for for different ways.